This is the king of the cats, the British Jaguar, with Tom Walkinshaw at the wheel. The man who not only runs a mean race team, but the man who finds time to run a multi-million dollar business empire. The tiny town of Kidlington near Oxford might not be one of the world's great landmarks, but it's home base for 35-year-old Scott Tom Walkingshaw, arguably England's most successful touring car driver. Walkingshaw's TWR racing operation is responsible solely for the preparation, testing and international competition program of Jaguar and Rover. It's really a case of the man who knows the score, owns the store. Good morning to WR. Yes, Tom Walkingshaw's just arrived. One moment, please. Good morning, Tom. It's a call for you from Germany. All right. Walkingshaw's TWR empire hasn't grown overnight. It's taken many years to establish, but he's always been able to maintain that personal touch. Really? What, the 6th of October? No. We're, we're in Australia doing the James Hardy 1000. Your association with Rover and Jaguar, how did that first come about? British Leyland, as it was then, the group was beginning to be the, the butt end of all the jokes that were going around in the, in the industry and in the trade. And we were just having a board meeting one day and it came up that, you know, we're here in the Midlands and our entire livelihood really depends to a degree on the economics of, of the country and the part of the country we're in. And we just thought, well, if we don't at least try and do something, then we haven't earned the right to take the mickey out of them, if you, if you like. Uh, so they were running, uh, British Leyland were running a, a rover team, which uh, we could see had potential, but at that time they were having a lot of problems with it. So we approached them and said, look, we, th we think we know some of your problems and how we can make the car faster. Uh, they brought us in halfway through the year as a consultant on the car, and within a couple of weeks we'd, we'd modified the suspension for them. The car was going about two, two and a half seconds a lap quicker. And at the end of that year, uh, they came to us and said, right, would we take over the entire, the entire project? You're obviously busy with the ETC series. Why then turn your schedule upside down and go to Australia for a one-off race? Well, it's quite simple, really. For quite a few years, we wanted to do Bathurst, and uh, there was always a conflicting ETC race or something that prevented us doing it. Then last year, we got the opportunity to do it. The calendar permitted it, so we obviously came down, and, and uh, we ran in the Jag down there. And after being to the place and coming away with our tail between our legs, we decided that you know we just had to go by, come what may and try and do it properly, which is what we're going to try and do this year. Owning a team means that you get the right to hire and fire drivers. What do you look for in drivers? You want guys who will drive very fast consistently and will work in with the team and, and uh, not sort of too self-centred about their own position the whole time. It's difficult, you know, but I think it, you, can, you can get that. We've got Formula One drivers who drive for us and they work in very well. You get other guys who come out of Formula 3 would come along and, you know, it's just about impossible to work with them. But you've got to try different people at different times and then you soon find out from, from the mechanics, from the managers, from the other drivers who's blending in and who's not blending in and at, at the end of the day you just have to take a decision on that. Is Group A as political as Formula 1? Probably in its own little world it is. I mean, obviously, there's not quite the clout that goes about in Formula One because there's just so many big sponsors and, and big manufacturers. But you still have three or four big motor manufacturers involved and everyone wants to be winning. So uh, it can be pretty heavy at times. Do all of them play the game? No, no everyone plays a game. <laughs> Tom, your operation here at Kidlington is most impressive. What about a guided tour? And this is where we prepare the the Group C Jaguars and uh, and the rest of the workshop where we prepared the XGSs before we shipped them off to Australia. What else is involved with the workshop? What other work do you carry out here? Well, all the fabrication is done, the machine shop's over the other side, and uh, at the moment we still prepare some of the XGS road cars which we sell, the special ones which we convert and sell to the, the public through Jaguar dealers. They're done over there so to, to give them a bit of character and 
so forth at the moment. How many people do you have working in this particular area? Oh, all together, it'll be about 25 in this area uh, on the on the Jaguar Racing Project. A lot of wages to find at the end of the week? Oh, yeah, but they earn it, so it's not a problem. I don't think wages are ever a problem if the people actually work hard and earn it. Just we have a whole load of guys sort of taking the money and not doing anything for it. That's when you've got a problem. They don't last long. No, they don't last at all. <laughs> right, this is the, the TWR Rover shop now where we prepare all the cars for the ETC. Also, we're running the French Championship with Jean-Louis Schlesser and uh, the rally cars which we're running the British Championship with Tony Pond. This is the car I, I've been driving in the ETC up to now, I think. Tom, do you think you've got enough rovers here? We breed them, don't we? You know, it's almost incestuous, <laughs> so there's a full line of them down here. That's right. We normally have about ten cars. Uh, we run three all the time in the ETC, and we have a, a test car for a backup uh, for doing the development on. Also the same for France. The regulations are slightly different there. So we, uh, we have the car that's raced all the time, and then a backup car just in case. What about the destroyed. accident ratio during the course of the season? High? No, not really. Uh, we don't usually find that if you're going to get panel work, it all sort of happens in one race meeting and everyone goes a little bit crazy and you pick up damage, then after that everyone sort of settles down again. Uh, we don't really have a lot of uh, accident damage. Well, there's no wheels on any of these cars, but if we have mm. a look at our next stop, we'll find a whole heap of tyres. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We also do all the, the Dunlop tyre distribution, so the, sh the tyre shop's next door. Well, Mike, this is the tyre shop where we distribute all Dunlop's racing tyres all over Britain and part of Europe as well. We also do motorcycles as well as the car race. And how many tyres do you have in here on a busy day? Well, we sell about 26,000 tyres a year through here, so it just depends on what the race meeting is, that uh, how much stock you have in here. Well, you've got the cars, you've got the engineering, yeah. you've got the tyres. Is there anything else that you need to complete the whole package? We also sell crash helmets for GPA in France. That would seem reasonable. Oil for motor in France. That's about it, I think. Yes. Pleased to see it's not commercial. Yeah, no, I couldn't bear it if it was too commercial. Well, Mike, here's the trucks, you know, which we use to transport all the cars around Europe, which I think if one had to identify the biggest logistical problem that you encounter racing in Europe, the, the transportation side of it probably is it, because with England being on a, an island, every time we want to go and race anywhere, we've got to get ferries booked and, and, and everything else, which with a racing team and everything usually running late, gives the, the transport guy a few sleepless nights. You're using a three-car team for the ETC. How many of these rigs, then, do you effectively send into Europe every time you race? Well, you, you would use a, an Arctic look list to carry the three cars, we then have a rigid truck to carry all the spare parts and the spare engines. And then we would have another Arctic full of tires to, to give all the tire back up. So when I mean, we go to racing in Europe, we'll probably carry about 400 tires with us. So it's quite a big operation. Well, thanks for that marvelous guided tour of the TWR. Actually, while we're talking about TWR, everything around this area is TWR. You're not going to make a bid to buy Kidlington or anything, are you? No, well, not yet. It's on the cards. Only if we win Bathurst. Tommy Walkinshaw, a rather remarkable man, the European Touring Car Championship, and he continues to lead the James Hardy 1000 at Bathurst.